Hey everybody and welcome back to the RPG series. So today we're going to be adding the uh, battle scene view. So the first step to do that is actually going to be to go to the Unity Asset Store and search for a blur tool because we're going to make it so the background is blurred. And what you want to do is get the Crivodling, uh asset which is right here. If for some reason you can't find it or something like that you can look on the GitHub and you can actually go into my uh, folders and download those specific folders that I have if you couldn't find it. But uh, you should be able to find it, so just make sure you log into your account and then download and then you can open it in Unity. So we can close out of that and then go over to the package manager and wait for that to load. And then once it does, you can switch over to my assets. And then once you do that, you just need to go and find it. So I have a lot of assets here, but we can look and see where it is. And just click load more. And it's right here, UI blur. So then you can click on it and then click import. And it's going to be fine to just import everything. So you can just click that and then wait for it to load. Okay. And then once it loaded, you'll have this new folder. So if I go back to assets, you can see there's now this Crivodling folder. And what we want to do is create a new folder and just call it utilities, because this will be for the sort of extra assets and packages and everything that we need to import of external tools for our game. So we can go ahead and open this up. And if you go inside here into the blur folder, you can see there's actually a demo. And if you click on the scenes, you can open up the demo. Now, of course, we don't actually want this in our actual game, but it's fine to have here in the folder so that we can test it out and see how this works. So you can see that there's this ball moving around. And then right when I click here, you can see the background is blurred but this back button and this image isn't blurred. So that's sort of a nice effect to have. And if I actually go over here into the canvas, into this panel right here, you can actually see that I can change this multiplier to make it so there's more or less blur. So you can actually play around with all of this before you uh, implement it for the rest of this video. But we'll go ahead and just go back here and what we need to do is look for uh, this panel right here. We don't need to actually look in the assets folder. So what we can do is we can just copy this entire panel for now, and we'll be able to use it once we've created the battle view scene. All right, so what we need to do is go back into our scenes folder and create a new scene and call it the battle view like that and once you start a battle how it's going to be working is that you go from the current scene that you're in and you switch into the battle view sort of like something like uh, Pokemon so then once you have this battle view you can click uh, new UI and then you should be able to just select canvas right here so this creates a canvas, which is where anything that is a UI element will go. And you can see this really large because it's actually going to follow the normal screen size instead of what we're working with right here, which is a very pixelized games game. So there's very few pixels. So the camera is very smaller, small, but the size of this canvas doesn't actually matter. It'll correctly format onto the screen once you start playing. And then what we can do is we can just press paste as child. So we now have this blur inside here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, rename this to blur panel, is that's just a better name. And we're going to want to add a new tag here and call this tag blur panel as well. And that's just so that we can easily find this panel. Okay. So next we can look at the children of this blur panel. And well, of course, these uh, images don't really fit the theme of our game. So we can just delete them both by pressing the delete button. 
And what we can do just for now is insert a UI button. So I'll say this button doesn't really look very nice, but for now it'll just be a good test button for us. And I'm just going to put it at the bottom of the canvas here and just say, uh, leave for now. It'll just be the leave button. So that's the name of it. And then I'll also uh, find the button text, which is right here. It's a child and change the text of that to leave as well. So we can click play on this battle view scene and you can see that we just have a little button right here that you can click. But of course, nothing else has really been implemented correctly. So the next step is going to be to do a lot of coding actually inside of our hero script. So let's go ahead and open this up and get started with that. So right now we just have the on collision enter to test if it's an enemy and if it is, well, nothing happens, right? We just say start battle, but we don't actually do anything. So we can actually change that now. And the first step to do that is to make it so we can actually work with uh, Unity Engine dot, dot scene management because we're going to be able to uh, switch into the uh, battle view. So the first step to do this is to disable the current game mechanics. So what we want to do is we want to set the time scale to zero. And this will be a really cool effect because you'll see right when we hit into an enemy that at the entire game will pause. And then what we want to do is we want to find the game object, uh, the camera object, and we want to get a component for the audio listener actually enabled and set that to false. So the reason that we want to do this is because we're going to be switching into another scene, but this other scene is going to be of type additive, which means it's on top of the current scene. And each scene has its own audio listener on the camera. And actually you can only have one audio listener in Unity or else you'll get warnings or errors. But we can go ahead and just uh, try this out and see what happens so far. So if I go over to scenes, wait for it to load, uh, forest one, and you can see it's way zoomed out because uh, the canvas in the other scene is way zoomed out. And if I click play here, I can actually run over to this slime and you can see all time has paused. I'm trying to move, but I just can't because the time scale was set to zero. So that's a really cool way to pause the game, but it does have its own issues, which we won't get into now. So if we go back to the script here, what we can do is we can now set it up so that we switch to the battle view scene. So let's get started with that. First, we need to use scene manager and load the scene, the battle view scene. And we want to set the load scene mode to additive because like I said before, this scene will be on top of the other scene. So both of the scenes will exist at the same time and they will both be loaded, but just uh, one of them will be the main scene. So what we can do next is we can do this special um, programming paradigm, which is dealing with delegates and events. So in Unity, you have different events that can occur and the scene manager scene management actually has a bunch of different events that you can subscribe to it's called so the scene loaded is one of those events that you can subscribe to because actually this isn't uh running in one frame so you have to actually subscribe to this event instead of just doing the next line of code after this. Because if you just did another line of code, the scene is probably not loaded yet. Because remember, all of this code that's in here is running one frame at a time. Every single frame, it's running all of this code over and over again. So to deal with the fact that the scene might not be loaded, we can subscribe to the scene loaded event. And then once it's loaded, then we can actually do the logic we want. So this is just the way that you do that. So we'll subscribe a special function to the scene loaded event. And then once the 
uh, scene is loaded, then this function will be called, which we can write that function right now. So we can just say private void on battle view start and then set our own information here. So we want the scene and then the load scene mode mode. So since we're subscribing to this event, it will give us this information right here. And you can just find that out through the documentation if you want to work with a different event, for example. And the first thing that we can do here is uh, scene manager dot scene loaded. And we can unsubscribe from the event because we don't want this to keep on running. And so to subscribe to the event, you want to do plus equals. And to unsubscribe, you want to do minus equals. Now, it is really confusing because you usually use plus equals and minus equals for numbers. But that's just the uh, operator that you use for this. And now we're going to have to work with something called coroutines as well. So it's very similar to how we have to subscribe and unsubscribe to this event. Because everything is running uh, asynchronously, it's called we need to have a coroutine as it's called. So what we want to do is we want to start a coroutine and we want to do battle view start scene. So we want to pass in that scene that we got from right here. And again, we haven't created a battle view start. So actually we don't want it to be on battle view start. We want it to be battle view start, a, a separate function quite confusing, but we'll get through it. So a coroutine returns an I enumerator, it's called. And we can do battle view start just like before. And it takes in scene scene just like before. And the reason that we want to use the coroutine right here is again, this is asynchronous and we need to wait until the frame has ended in order to do this. So we need to make sure that the scene is loaded again. So while it's not loaded, we'll yield return new wait for end of frame, which just means that this coroutine is going to keep on running and it'll just keep on waiting for the end of the frame until the scene is actually loaded. And then after that, the scene is for sure loaded now because we've gotten past this line of code because this is a while loop. So it'll keep running this until this does not occur anymore. And then it skips over it once the scene is actually loaded. So then we can do scene manager dot set active scene and scene. So like I said before, the scene that's already loaded, which would be forest one in this case, so the forest scene, is the active scene. And then we are loading this new scene in its additive, so it's a scene on top of the other scene, and we want to set this new scene as the active scene. So that's how we would do that. And then we want to wait again for um, the end of frame. So wait for end of frame. And then once we've waited again, we're actually going to want to access that game panel or that blur panel from before. So what we can do is we can do game object blur panel equals game object find game object with tag and the blame game object with the blur panel tag, which we already set. And once we have that, we can just take the blur panel, we can get the a specific component. So we didn't look at it too closely, but uh, let me look here. Once it loads, if you click on here on the blur panel, you can see it has a UI blur script and that's what we were playing around with before changing this value. So what we can actually do is we can actually access that, although we have to use uh, a specific line which right here is we have to access crevodling and that's because uh, if we go back here and if we edit this script we're inside a namespace called crevodling UI effects so this is a way to keep a uh, code really separate and this is a good way to do things so because this is a separate package it has its own namespace 
which does make things a little bit more complicated because then you have to say effects. and if you go back here so now we're inside this correct namespace and then we can do UI blur. And then once we do that, we can say begin blur, and we can have the blur occur over five seconds. So if we look in here, we have a begin blur function right here that we can use. And this is kind of like a master function that gets everything going for us. So actually, it's really quite simple, right? All we had to do was get the blur panel, and then we had to just execute the begin blur. So that would be a lot easier than actually writing our own script for this and also shader. All right, now we can actually test this out, but you'll see I got an error right here when I just tested it out real quick. And it says, uh, if we look here, scene battle view couldn't be loaded because it hasn't been added to the build settings. So to fix that, what we have to do is we have to go to file, build settings, and then we can actually click add open scenes but I don't have the right scene open. So what we can do is we can go to battle view and add open scenes. And we can also go to initialize and add open scenes. So basically what's going on here is that we have our different scenes, but they're not actually being put into the game. And the reason that that is, is because maybe you wanna have scenes in here that you're not actually using. Like for example, we have the uh, demo scene right here, but we don't want it in the game. So all we have to do is just not put this inside the build settings, which is a really great system to have. But that just means you have to remember to do that. So we can go back to uh, Forest 1 right here, click play, and run into the slime and see if it works. You can see that the battle view scene has been loaded, but we still have some issues that we need to fix. All right, so head into the battle view scene and first of all, change uh, the main camera's transform uh, Z value to negative 15. And then after that, let's go into the blur panel and change the Z position of that to zero. All right, and the next step is to adjust the additional shader channels so that this canvas can work with the uh, shaders. So we select text chord one, normal, and tangent. All right, then after that, we go to this blur panel right here, and we change the size, because right now it's matching the camera when it needs to be matching uh, the canvas over here. So let's select the uh, panel and adjust it to the same size as that. All right, we can go back to the uh, forest scene here and click play and hopefully we'll see some improvements. All right, so we can see this now blurry and you can click leave, but we still have the one problem where the camera is zooming out now. All right, so one step we can take to help fix this is go to the cameras and then the main camera and then change the depth of the camera to zero. Let's see if that worked. All right, so you can see that that worked. Honestly, I don't know why that works, but it does. And so we now have a shaded background with interactable buttons in front. So we can make it so you can uh, have a battle scene sort of in here, which we can work on in future episodes. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.